Recording in progress. Good evening and welcome. Would you please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance? Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. I apologize for being just a little late. We did have a new teacher reception that went just a little bit over. Uh, do you have a roll call, Tiffany? Yes, I do. Thank you. Resolve the Board of Education approve the agenda for the September 9th, 2024 regular Board of Education meeting. Don? Second. Christy? I doubt that there's discussion. Can I have a all for all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. And now uh, our first order of business and one of the highlights of our meeting is our spotlight and Joe and, and Christy will do the spotlight. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, we are very excited this evening to recognize students and staff as we typically do in all of our board of education meetings. Uh, tonight we're first starting by recognizing uh, two members of the C.W. Baker High School class of 2025 who participated in the American Legion Boys State at Morrisville State College from June 28th through July 3rd. For those of you that are not aware, uh, Boys State is a week-long program that immerses soon-to-be high school seniors in citizenship and leadership training. Participants uh, learn the practical aspects of New York State government and the role of citizens play in the character and success of government. Under the guidance of the American Legion counselors and the U.S. Marines, Students um, also participate in a physical fitness uh, component to that uh, event. So we're excited. Our two members are Austin Rogers and Luke Primrose. That's okay, our girls are representing guys in the audience. Um, the next group that we're looking to recognize this evening are uh, three members of C.W. Baker High School's class of 2025 who participated in the American Legion Auxiliary Empire Girl State program at SUNY Brockport from June 30th through July 6th. And we have um, three members. I'll say those three members first, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the program is about. Uh, Naya Delardi. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> Dr. DeBarbery, this is Austin Rogers. Oh, we'll get Austin. Just hang on. Thank you. Kira Lambert. And Julia Paula. While they're standing up here, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the Girls' State, similar to the Boys' State, the Empire Girl State is an educational program of the American Legion Auxiliary developed from the concept that youth should be offered a better perspective of the practical operation of government. That is, the individual is the integral part of the, uh, has a responsibility for character and success of the government, and is an activity of high education value born of the need for youth training in Americanism and practical good citizenship. So we can't thank you enough for being outstanding representatives of the Baldwinsville Central School District at that event. Congratulations. Thank you. And I go back to Boys State. And we said we had Austin. Yeah.
for our staff spotlight this evening, we're very excited to recognize our Director of People and Personnel Services, Jenna Wolkin. So if Jenna could come up. Jenna is being recognized for her outstanding work in arranging the free back to school haircut event for our students as well as working with uh, our uh, back to school supply um, program for students. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with um, the work that's done out of the student services department, they go out of their way to help Beagle families, uh, specifically this year with the free school supplies, but also um, they wanted to do more and they chose to offer the ability working with one of our local um, hair salons, uh, the opportunity for students to get free haircuts. And I will say that I was able to attend that event and it was unbelievable seeing all of our students and families come in to get their hair. It brought tears to my eyes. It did, I think, to the workers that were there. I can't thank um, that hair salon uh, and, and the owner for putting that on and hosting the event uh, through the work of, of Jenna and all of the barbers and the stylists that took time uh, during their summer to uh, cut the hair for free uh, for our students. It really says a lot about what our school is about and our community is about, and that is a, a direct reflection of the work of, of Jenna and our student services department. So thank you on behalf yeah. of the district. We appreciate it. Thank you. You don't get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you again. Congratulations. It's quite an honor to go to Blaisenville State. And again, uh, we do appreciate uh, Jim's work and, and Carrie Lamaki's work on collecting supplies and making it uh, a very nice back to school for a lot of kids who may have a little struggle getting all their supplies. Thank you. Uh, moving on, the next item is correspondence and board activities. So I think we had a, a reasonably good first week of school, and I know Dr. Barber was keeping busy getting around all the buildings. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, the business people start now, so uh, feel free, okay? But thank you, guys. Um, Anything, anything anybody wants to report from their uh, travels? I know that there are several board members that were at this transportation department next last Wednesday, first day of school. And uh, Christy wanted to talk about her experience, I think. Thanks, Vic. Um, yeah, it really was terrific to see all the um, bus drivers come back from their first run. There were smiles all around and lots of enthusiasm, and it seems like our kids have a really nice group of bus drivers uh, that are taking them to and from school this year. Sorry. Sam? We also had a great tour of um, construction work at Derby, so it's phenomenal what's going on, and I can't wait to see it finished. Okay, any, anybody else? I forgot to mention, uh, we met the mechanics, the painters. They um, do all the behind the scenes stuff in the bus garage and they gave us a little overview of, of everything they do and I, I didn't want to forget them because we really appreciate them as well. Okay, thank you, thank you. And then we have several upcoming things. I know there's a number of curriculum nights upcoming. As a matter of fact, tomorrow is Eldon's curriculum night, so anybody that wishes to attend any of those, I think they usually start at about 6 o'clock, is that correct? Yes, uh, and the changes this year, they've decided the elementary level, they want to try to make it as much of a family focused event as possible, so students are invited as well, that's a shift from what we've done in the past, and part of that's to help with child care and really make it a more uh, memorable experience for all, so we hope that there'll be a greater interest, uh, even though it's been well attended in the past, we, we hope to see even more families uh, at the events over the next two weeks. That's, that's great, wonderful. Um, any other comments on upcoming activities? I might mention that some of us are wearing these gold ribbons, and that is in a, a honor and awareness of childhood K-12 
Cancer Month, which is September. This is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So, okay, any other comments there? We'll move on um, for the student board report. Evie, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so a couple of days before school started, we had the SAC meeting, the Student Advisory Council, and we just met up with the club leaders and we talked about um, the plans for the upcoming year and what the clubs are, uh, what their goals are going to be. Um, and then after that, we had the sophomore orientation where we can get familiar with the building again and help welcome the sophomores um, to Baker. And it was really nice to meet some of them and answer any questions they had and explain some further things that they might ask their counselor. I had a lot of questions about classes. Um, and then, um, in addition to that, sports started a little bit before um, the first day of school. This past weekend, we had volleyball, soccer, football, cross country, all had placement. Um, all first day cross, cross country got second, and that was just a great start to the sport, to the fall sport year. Um, and then we also have in plan the activity fair September 27th, which is what we talked about in the SAC meeting. It'll be a great opportunity to again help the sophomores be a part of a club and any juniors and seniors that want to help boost up their social life. And it's a great way to meet people. And I know they're we're trying to make the activity fair more like, you know, involved this year instead of just um, blue and have some activities and that kind of thing. Um, we also this week we have senior night. And that's going to help um, students and their parents engage with teachers and talk about colleges, financial, financial aid, application process. We also have that during the summer, but this will be a little bit more in depth. Um, the PA system, uh, we were talking about that because it's a new one. It's really interesting. The students are trying to get used to it. Um, sometimes we forget because we don't recognize the tune and we're like, oh, we're supposed to go to class now. But um, it's a really interesting new addition. It's a new change that we didn't quite really think would be significant, but it is. And then lastly, the cell phone policy, I think, has been going really well. And I asked a lot of kids and a lot of different teachers, and it's very, from most of the teachers that I've had, it's very uniformed, um, very well known, and the expectations are the same. There's not a lot of variation. And I talked to a lot of kids, and they said, it's really nice to have just one set of rules. Even if they do want to be on their phone, they know that it's good for them. and that's just really good to hear that they're actually, you know, they care about their education versus whatever's on their phone. Thank you. Great. Great. Well, thank you. That was an excellent report. And I see your high school principal smiling back there from your cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is uh, our chance to hear from the public on any comments. Do we have any speakers tonight? No. Okay. okay. We'll go through our, our, of course, we do ask for three minutes and, and for the same respect by our speakers as our, as our children and our students give each other. So moving on then to our consent agenda, resolve the Board of Education for the consent agenda pursuant to the attached. Don, Sam, Don, and I guess there's several things on here, uh, so we're, we're open for discussion here. One thing uh, I did notice is our IEP uh, listing here is very long, Carrie. So you've been doing a lot of work on that. You want to just talk a little bit about uh, the IEP special education? Of course. Um, so that first box that you see there, that's kind of just like a snapshot of, you know, it's, I think for the board really important information because it includes that initial eligibility information, um, you know, and that kind of goes to the number of meetings that we have, um, who's eligible, and not just in CSE, but preschool side as well. And then, you know, the number of those that are ineligible, and then any time we declassify student, which kind of goes to that eligibility rate um, that you see that we're monitored on, on by the state as one of our indicators. Um, so summer's kind of a funny time. It can be pretty challenging for us in our office because um, it can be, you know, Committee on Special Education, we have a lot of mandated members, so getting people in for committee meetings can be tricky. Um, and we're mandated to have certain staff at the meetings, and so it can be really challenging. Um, we go into the summer, you know, I think from the school end, side of things, trying to wrap things up. We typically know 
you know, through our ISP and pre-referral process who might be on the docket to be referred and maybe we want to do an evaluation to look at things and, and we're, we're pretty on top of that as far as planning that out, you know, toward the spring. Um, but what happens is we do get parent referrals and sometimes doctor referrals that lead to parent referrals. And that tends to happen a lot in the spring. I think we talked about this a little bit at one of our other meetings too, where um, you know, we, we're obligated to start that 60-day timeline if we have a parent that wants an evaluation, we have to honor that. And that does tend to happen a lot in the spring um, leading into the summer. Or over the summer, I think just anxiety, nerves, worries about starting a new school year, right? So if you have a child that's struggling, that upcoming school year can be anxiety provoking, leads to referrals. So you'll see there's not a lot of ineligible um, meetings that have happened since June, and that's because usually those are some pretty, you know, more intense cases or situations. The other thing that happens a lot in the, around this time of year is that we get transfers. So sometimes families wait to move until over the summer, right before the school year starts, um, and so we do get a lot of transfers. And you can see if you scroll down, one of the ways that you can tell the difference between a meeting is if we get a new student, it will say transfer student agreement no meeting. Um, and so that's one way for you to kind of monitor how many um, new students we do get that move in with, with IEPs. And what we'll typically do is we, we do a transfer agreement no meeting, which means we immediately adopt the IEP from the previous school district. Um, you know, we talk with the family and we talk about the services we have that we're obligated to provide that are comparable. We transfer that IEP in so that everybody can be aware of it and then within 30 days we hold a meeting with our staff to talk about how's it going, you know, is, is this going well, do they need any more supports, less supports, but, but that's really the best way for you to kind of monitor what might be happening with new students that will go over the summer and into the fall. Um, January is another hot time for that to happen. So, and then you can kind of see too um, with the services. You know, I think we've talked about before. We do have a lot of students that move here for special our special education services. I had a meeting with a family today, and they indicated that they had moved here because they felt like we had really inclusive practices, and um, they felt like we could best serve their child. So, so it's not a bad thing, but it's a long one for sure. Those long variants have been very proud of their care for special needs, and uh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, anybody else questions on, on this? I think uh, Joe is going to talk a little bit about the SROS ORO agreement here. So, we have on the consent agenda the approval of the uh, non instructional our school resource officers, our SBROs. So, you see the five of the elementary schools that we have working in collaboration with the Onondaga County Sheriff's Department, our office, and the uh, Bonneville Police Department. Uh, so those are listed there for approval. You may recall at our last meeting, we uh, created a resolution to uh, have those positions this year. And this is to, to work in tandem with those other agencies. So thankful that we were able to work things out and navigate uh, the waiver request that we were able to obtain through the education department. Okay, that, that's great news. And of course, safety is a you know, prime objective in all of our schools. And we're so proud to have SROS, PRO people in all our buildings and threat detection systems in all our buildings. You will see the Baldwin's Hill uh, agreement is on this meeting. You will notice on the October meeting, we will have the Sheriff's uh, Office Agreement. We had to wait, uh, we have it, it's ready to go, but given the 30-day public comment period for the safety plan with the adjustment that we had to make for um, the Onondaga County Sheriff's, uh, we can't approve that until October uh, at that first meeting. Just a, just a quick question, I don't want to get your names and numbers, obviously, um, but just, it's going to be a question for Dave, I'm not sure. Uh, just for are we fairly competitive where we are? With, with so we are in a good place. Uh, it is actually identical to what we were working last year with the Sheriff's Department when they actually build us for the services, so it's consistent. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments on consent agenda? 
see the vote. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion's carried. Uh, we're starting new business. Following textbook adoption request is being presented by the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment pursuant to the attached. The textbook will be used in grades 12 AP African American Studies classes. This will appear on agenda for the October 7th, uh, 2024 regular board of education meeting for second reading and approval. Uh, going with our policy of uh, first reading and second reading. And you can see there the African American Odyssey is the proposed text. Now, moving on to item B, uh, Resolve Board of Education approved the amended Bosel Central School District Safety Plan pursuant to the attached. Don? Who was that, Luke? Thank you. And did you want to give us just an update, Joe? Uh, the changes that were made to the safety plan are based on the Board of Regents adopting updates to the regulations at the July meeting, uh, specifically related to uh, trauma-informed drills, uh, meaning uh, the uh, lockdown drills and uh, making sure that we're being sensitive to the social-emotional uh, needs of students, which is something that we've always done here in this district, uh, as well as notification to parents um, prior to drills. We've done that. Um, historically when the drill commences, but based on the new regulations, uh, no more than seven days in advance, up to 24 hours in advance, we have to notify families uh, of evacuation uh, drills. Uh, it can be uh, broad enough where we can say what we've been doing, there'll be fire drills or evacuation drills next week, and we don't have to specify a specific date and time. The reason for that is because you don't want to draw attention to when you're going to have hundreds of kids outside um, for safety reasons, obviously. Um, that being said, uh, for the lockdown drills, we do have to give a date and time, but they're ultimately controlled within the school environment. Um, so meeting the updates to the regulations, I feel like we're in a good place, um, and that's really the, the focus of the updates from our May public hearings and board approval of the job July meeting. Other questions, discussion? So pretty much the same, we just had to make a, that minor change because the state regulation changes. Right. And you will approve this again in October on the 7th because we had to, we had a change to the um, Onondaga County Sheriff's Agreement. So every time you have safety related with SROs and the safety plan itself, you have a 30 day public comment period before you can approve this. So we will bring this back again on the 7th with a new on the kind of sheriff's contract amended or added at the um, appendix to this document. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hearing no further questions or discussions, we'll proceed to vote then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, this is item C workplace violence plan. Resolved Board of Education approves the workplace violence plan pursuant to the attached. Christy? Second. Jeremy? Uh, again, this is pretty much what we've adopted in the past, I think, right? Correct, yeah, we were required based on law, uh, effective in January, we added a policy. Dave's worked with the various unions, they had to um, review the document. Our safety officer worked with human resources and the business office to put this plan together, and uh, we're just seeking final um, approval of this document. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. I suppose. Motion carries. Now, the exciting stuff. Result the Board of Education approved the award of golf cart bid number 402 pursuant to the attached. <coughs> Sam, thank you. Sam's husband's a golfer, so she ought to be this. <laughs> Okay, so this was a little bitter and everything's in order. And this is for athletics. Um, when yeah. you think about all of the trainers and folks working on our events, it's to get to and from in as efficient way as possible. Uh, and we needed to purchase a few additional, which will also come in handy 
given the fact that we're under construction and folks need to be transported from the handicapped parking place to the uh, bleachers or the stands, we can use these for that uh, as well. Okay. Other questions? Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Item E, Job Board of Education approved the Baltimore Central School District budget calendar and process for 2025 <coughs> 2026 pursuant to the attached. So moved. Thank Aye. you, Wayne. Luke. So just, uh, I believe this is the same one we've used in previous years pretty much. So in December, we'll start our discussion and end it in March, April time frame. Yeah. Uh, the, work session, the work sessions related to uh, the budget will be in December and January, and then hoping that the board will be able to adopt in uh, probably the beginning of February is the hope, depending on where we are with the aid runs and all of that. Other questions, discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. And uh, item F, resolve Board of Education for the general construction bid for phase one 2023 capital project pursuant to the attached. Sam? Second. <laughs> Luke? Okay. And I, it's up there so you can see the, the amount and this of course has been bid and we talked about. I give a little bit more context. Okay. Because this is general construction. This is related to the um, the front of Baker High School where the cafeteria is. Um, those windows are being replaced as part of this project that was approved. So that is a part of phase one. While we were doing the field, field work, we needed to do so much inside a building in order to start generating um, that aid. So this work uh, is aligned to that. And so there will be that as soon as uh, we give them the go-ahead. It should be a pretty easy um, process to do that work. Yeah. Thank you. I just have to mention that you know, in our Friday letter, we saw the, the schematic. So they're going to have a separate, nice athletic entrance, not just a couple of doors you might not be able to see when it's dark. Um, so there will be a main entrance and an athletic entrance. Yeah. And we'll share more with the board and the public as we continue to work through the facilities uh, meetings uh, as we get more graphics. Um, hopefully not to confuse people with the proposed project um, and what we've already approved, but it is exciting when you start to see the transformation uh, from the visuals of, of what um, what the building will look like. It's, it's a pretty cool thing. Any other questions? Those in favor? Those opposed? The motion carries. And now uh, for our round table, the discussion is uh, the capital project vote date time. And I will turn over to, to Joe for more details, sir. So I provided uh, the board, the cabinet, we provided some more information in the Friday letter. Um, and you'll see under the executive content. I know on our work session in August, we talked about the potential for having a, a vote uh, in February, and um, I think that was the plan. Um, but the more and more we start thinking about timing and, and what we believe we could do in order to you know, move this forward and, and bring it to our voters for hopefully a successful vote, we thought it would make more sense to try to do this in December. And there's, uh, variety of, of reasons why, uh, you know, from an administrative point of view. Um, we get that out of the way before the budget development process really is in full swing as we're preparing for the vote in, in May. Um, it allows us to keep it as far away from May as possible uh, so that we don't confuse folks given the large number of this multi-year project pulls it away in a way that it is unique that we're looking at it from a, a multi-year lens where we haven't done that in the past, so it's another reason that, to keep it separate. Um, I think we have enough time. Uh, we, we 
believe that there will likely be more community members here physically in December as opposed to the uh, February time frame because a lot of folks uh, winter elsewhere, um, even though that they can technically submit absentee ballots and, and, and go through that process. Um, it's, it's a little bit easier now to do that. It just seems like it would make more sense to, to um, hold the, the vote when we have more people here um, to vote um, one way or the other, hopefully in favor, but obviously they can vote as they see fit. Um, I also think given the momentum that we have moving from the start of the school year and what we shared in our other messages and what we plan to do with our October, end of October, beginning of November high, we, we believe we can get everything out there. And so I'd rather hit the ground running and just go full steam ahead if the board agrees with that um, and, and then see where we stand. Um, I think also from the perspective of people tend to be in a better place uh, around the holiday season as opposed to you know seasonal depression and things like that that occur legitimately uh, during the winter months when everyone is thinking does it have to be this bitter cold, or are we going to get this, you know, get rid of this snow at some point? Um, February, March are, are long months, so um, those are some reasons that we believe that we might be better served to do this um, vote in December as opposed to February, as we initially put out there. Uh, we checked with the architects, we checked with legal, we have the ability to meet all the timelines, and when you really think about uh, the work of promoting things really that 45 days prior to the vote, that's when things really t turn on, right? Uh, you have to turn things up. And even the presidential election, I use that as an example. And yes, people are probably paying attention right now, but they're gonna really start paying attention like probably a month before the vote when they're, and, and if you think about it, just delaying that, I don't know what's gonna, to February from December, I don't know that it's gonna gain us any more promotion in my opinion, but that's just that's just kind of where I stand. You know, we talked about it as a cabinet and we mentioned it a little bit to the board leadership. I just, I feel we can do it well uh, if we do it in December as opposed to February. <coughs> so, certainly looking for feedback. I don't think we gain any advantage in terms of our need to discuss and vet and think about it. December or February, we, we should be fine by December to do that. I think it makes a lot of sense. I agree. And I, I think people are more engaged in the beginning of the school year and more excited and more interested and involved. So I think having this information available earlier would be better. Yeah. So Some of the great ideas I had from a few board members um, that have provided some feedback is to look at focus groups. Um, and so one of the things that we would be doing pending your approval with us moving forward with that timeline is that before anything went out, we would be um, having a small like little focus group review it from a variety of, I already reached out to some folks that are just community members um, and uh, even former board members and, and having them kind of navigate the, the um, information that we put out, whether it be the promotional videos, the hives articles, you'll see it as a full board as well to provide feedback, but we just thought the more stakeholders that can kind of weigh in and provide us with feedback prior to like publishing anything, it's gonna make us have a stronger um, marketing campaign than how I think we would if we didn't do that. We've also reached out to uh, the architects and, and their marketing department as well as another uh, group that's, we have a meeting scheduled this Friday, or Thursday, Thursday, it's Thursday. Uh, Thursday or Friday, Thursday Thursday Friday. 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 <laughs> right? That will uh, focus on um, really helping us try to drive this home. And what I think is also important to remind this board is when we talked about seventh grade moving to Derby a few years back, we already have the renderings. And so what I think my focus will be based on feedback too with these focus groups is also reaching out to the elementary PTAs We'll let you know uh, in the elementary principals have already had some conversations. The goal is to hold individual um, meetings at those buildings. Because when you think about who this impacts, this really impacts our first graders and, and, and below. Uh, maybe a second grader uh, across the district based on our timeline if everything moves forward. So 
really engaging those families and letting them know what this what this means a long term for them. So end of the month, beginning of October, probably hit those areas pretty hard and we'll let you know as a board if we're going to go ahead um, to invite you and kind of be a part of that process. One one thought and one question. Um, the, the, the thought is the scheduling actually is very important because to pull on your analogy, uh, in, in an election, your undecided voters begin to break 12 days before election day. And they don't break once they break trust. And so gather from, from focus groups, getting information on the right time frame is important because the presentation of that should happen at the right time as well. Um, the other, the, just a question. Um, and, and I think further the further away from, from May, the better. Um, I think the seven's a great idea. Um, if if DEC comes back and says we need to amend our seeker, which they often do, but um, sometimes that gets pricey. Um, is that it, from a schedule standpoint, from a budget standpoint, is is that kind of thing? Are we able to put any parameters or any, anything on there? I think based on the timeline we have. Um, and I don't want to jinx us, but typically we don't get comments back on the seekers, um, given the work that we're doing. Um, and that's pretty typical. We don't, we put it out there, we don't hear back. Um, it is going through that process. So working with the architects, I think we're in a good place. And obviously the attorneys will be weighing in as well. Um, but we believe we can meet the timeline uh, and still have a little bit of a cushion if you know, we can't submit the seeker by the date that we have scheduled. The hope is that the board will approve the seeker. Uh, the seeker and the um, the actual moving forward at the October seventh meeting, given the fact that we have the vote in December. So, we're okay with that. I just had a quick question too. This is a shameless plug for our first community cafe next Monday from six to eight. Is this something that could be discussed in a community cafe type thing as well? So that was brought up. Uh, we had, some, we, we will add another community cafe or whether we call it a community cafe or we call it a, um, you know, not necessarily a hearing, but an opportunity to learn about what this event or what this um, project fully entails. Uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll schedule some extra stuff. I don't know that a community cafe style would be necessary at that point. It's just allowing people to see what we have. Um, but we will definitely do that. That'll be part of the marketing. And I'll get you that information once we finalize what we plan to do. So would you think at some point, you know, before December, we can see a marketing plan? You know, what? As soon as we have the meeting this week, we will put things together and um, I'll let you know, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, so that hopefully you have all that information before the October 7th seeker and, and project moving forward resolution. I just want to say I agree with Wayne's thought that I think having some type of community town hall or ability for any and all community members to come learn and just open I think would be to our benefit uh, yeah, trying to propose something of this size. To be honest with you, I was thinking similar to what we've done in the past with reaching out to the town boards, um, going to their town board meetings and one of their work sessions just sharing where we are with, with this project. Um, similar to what we do with the budget process. I also have reached out to the uh, folks at the high school for the media and I think they're, we're working on trying to bring students more into this. So I think some of the small little vignettes that we do with the social media will be student driven, uh, where our folks that are part of um, the Baker News will go out to the elementary schools and talk to principals, talk to students, and just trying to market it in all of the buildings, because every building is impacted, right? Love that, fantastic idea. I definitely agree with um, Wayne and Luke as far as bringing the community in. And we've been talking about this since a long time, it seems like, and it's really exciting to see it come about. Yeah, we, we don't want to lose sight of the fact that 
the reason we're doing this capital project uh, and the phases involved in it is because for years we've had two two study groups that have both said you need to have the seventh grade with your other high school students because they're high school certified and, and it would be better to have your some elementaries together earlier so that you can guarantee a, a, a similar culture and the best practices across the board on those grades. Also, uh, also this somebody pointed out to me, as an elementary student, maybe part of the issue with moving to sixth grade is that you've spent four, five, now maybe six years, seven, seven years, excuse me. Leave it to Joe to correct my math, right? Those math teachers, you know, in, in one school. And now you've got to move to another school and then you're in a school for two years and you move to another school for two years. With this new plan, you, you would spend well, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, first, second, third, less than that, and then you'd go four, five, six, you'd have three years, and then seven, eight, nine, and the parents have said to us, it's hard to get involved when my kid's in a, in a school for two years. So now you got another year to, to plan and get ready, so. But at the time that we made these other changes to increase the academics and the student um, really taking better care of our students. Uh, so that's my two bits. Do we need any more discussion on this item or want to go forward to Jeremy's favorite topic, board resolution? <laughs> okay, so the other thing here was a discussion of proposed bylaws amendments and resolutions for New York State School Board Association annual meeting. And I think everybody knows this was a first, right? This was a first. First, Beeville submitted a, a resolution that they supported. Correct. Wow. I know, I know. So, so Don can give you a lot of advice on resolutions they didn't support last year. But whatever. Whatever. So, I would say the nice thing about this too is there's less resolutions overall, so and the fact that I think we're number eight, that means they're gonna hit that early, which Don knows from last year, we were like 50 something, I think. Oh, okay. And they didn't even get to us really. Um, but the fact that they're supporting it is a good thing. Um, yeah, ours came up last year in our set. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, and you, you something like that. Yeah. <laughs> this won't be nearly that long. There's, there's Hour seven of the second day. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So it's only two days. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. So wait for us you stay up. <laughs> second day's time. So the, you did have all the resolutions on there, and I guess we have some time. Yeah. But, but if, if there's any other resolutions, if I assume everybody's in favor of our resolution. And the one thing, the one thing that doesn't say in there, of course, is it, it pretty much paints the picture that We've got, we've got, what is it, 70 some year old buildings that we rehab and rehab and rehab at a, a much higher cost than normal construction would be. Um, and still, we're, we're really throwing good money into bad buildings. But when you build a, a building 70 years ago, it's hard to predict that that's where a population center might be. So if you're allowed to build new construction, you could more centrally locate that building and save your kids a lot of bus riding time and save you and the state a lot of transportation money. So that's another added benefit that I'm sure Jeremy and Sam will present uh, on October the 10th. The one, one thing that you do that they have to do, you have to do a, what a pre, I think there's like a, a quick um, hour-ish long training that they would have been ready to know if you guys have that. I think you might have gotten you got an email, email on but it. So. Yeah, okay. it's really just to make sure you know the parliamentary procedures right down that, that I <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
Okay. Oh, so that's the reason that resolution is made. So yeah. So what I heard back then was that there's a, a parliamentary briefing. Okay. That's that, probably what I said. It's it's very quick. They just kind of tell you how you buzz in with a question and all that kind of so, stuff and the order and how you get. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I did Jerry probably almost ready. Yeah. Based on our discussion at the policy meeting today, I would assume that he is ready. <laughs> okay. um, so. The only thing I would add to this is that maybe so that we don't have to spend time going through all these right now, we have time. Uh, we have the work session at our next meeting uh, in uh, two weeks. If there's anything that stands out where you feel strongly, then maybe we can have a, uh, you can have a board discussion uh, at the work session uh, as a second uh, topic and um, give Jeremy and Sam some feedback. So if I, that's our homework, I guess. Okay, yeah. So, so Wayne, you have homework. It's only 10% of our grade level. We do it a lot of ways. Okay, is there any other discussion on this? But uh, uh, I did, it did appear that you know, the ones they supported were, were pretty reasonable. I think, what, 20, maybe 24 they supported, something like that. And there was, like, you say 54 in all or something. But, uh, so we can look at that and, and go forward. Yeah. Anything else there for the good of the group? If not, Resolve the Board of Education into an executive session to discuss the matter made confidential by attorney client privilege, the employment history of a particular person and matters of specific student placement and or program that would otherwise disclose confidential personally identifiable student information. So Don. Second. Wayne. Those in favor? I suppose. Motion carries. So we'll take five minutes and be an exact. Thank you. Just a second. Recording stopped.